This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 6, Section 2, Classifying the Elements. In this section, you're going to distinguish representative elements and other groups on the periodic table. So you should have watched that intro information on a tour of the periodic table. Here are my notes, and as usual, I'm just going to kind of go through them quickly. He talked about the book, The Disappearing Spoon, because it's about gallium, a really unique element. He talked about the groups and periods again. Hopefully by now you know groups go up and down, periods go across. Group names. Then he talked about how the first uh, group has a particular name. The second group has a particular name. You already know about the transition metals, halogens, and noble gases are what we're going to talk about here. So we talked about that stair-step line. Again, it's just a way of separating those metals and nonmetals, and the ones that touch it are the metalloids. So we want to remember some exceptions. He talked about hydrogen. Again, here are the nonmetals, but hydrogen is a unique element, and he hangs out over there on the metal side because, again, there's certain properties of him uh, that, that act more like a metal. And again, he also talked about the exception for helium, how all of group 18 has eight valence electrons because they're stable, but helium only has two. Talked about those last two periods um, on the periodic table, again, that are part of six and seven. They're just kind of taken away to save some space. So to your notes packet. So pause the video, make sure to fill in the blanks, and then play to hear my words. So we want to remember that these representative elements are really a unique way of telling us the number of valence electrons. And I say sort of because we know that group 1 and 2 have 1 and 2 valence electrons, but groups 13 will have 3 valence electrons. Group 14 will have 4 valence electrons. Group 8 will have eight valence electrons. So these representative elements, the two, I want to say ends, right? The two groups on the left and the six groups on the right, those are going to give us our valence electrons. Hydrogen is very unique and it's going to be its own group. He is a very, very, very common element. Three out of four atoms are actually hydrogen atoms. And so this is a really neat periodic table because this shows you the abundance of all of these elements. And I thought that was pretty neat. And notice hydrogen is a big, big chunk. Carbon and oxygen are not too far behind. But if you notice these, hmm, these should look to you like your um, uh, transition elements. And then here down below, these are more or less your inner transition metals. There's not too many of those at all. So group one is your alkali metals. Pause the video and understand, read as you write so that you can understand their properties. Alkaline earth metals are going to group, be group two. Again, pause, read as you write and make sure to get an understanding of their properties. And I like to remember that group one is one word alkali and group two is two words alkaline earth metal so it's a way to remember um a, a group one and two and plus a is the beginning of the alphabet right so it's the first two rows start with the a uh, because the alphabet starts with a and then we have one word versus two words all right, the halogens, now we're moving all the way to the right of the periodic table, group 17. Uh, those are going to be your most reactive nonmetal group. The noble gas is your last group, 18. And of course, they have a filled outer energy level, so they're stable. And we want to remember that with the noble gases, they all have eight valence electrons except for helium. Helium only has two. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. So kind of thought those were kind of cute. All right. How about these last two rows of the periodic table? I want to remind you that the periodic table really should look like this, but they take those two 
parts of the row uh, six and seven, two parts of the period six and seven, and kind of pull them out. Again, uh, really it's just to save space, but they have their own. So most of the time, the groups are what's gonna give you similar properties. But in this case, it's the period six here and period seven here. These inner metal groups are gonna also contain certain properties of their own. So the lanthanides are the second to last row, period six. And the actinines are the very, very last row, and they're part of period seven. All right, can you handle this quiz? Pause the video, read. Oh, and I gave you the answer. Oh my goodness, which of the following elements is usually not part of the periodic table? It is usually color. So almost every single periodic table gives you at least the symbol, the name usually, an atomic number, an atomic mass, but they don't always give you a color of that element. And actually some elements do have some really pretty colors. How about this? Can you pause the video? Can you find these elements? Can you see if they fit one of these and which one is incorrectly labeled? Hopefully you came up with gallium is not a transition metal. All right, we'll see you in class.